that you've had a chance to study Alabama a little bit, what do you think of the matchup? How do you think you match up? And there was a lot of talk when you came here. You wanted to build an SEC caliber kind of team. How close are you to that? Well, I, the, the only thing, you just wish you're 100% healthy. You know, whenever you go into a, a title match like this, you just wish it everybody, but we don't. You know, Dontre is going to be a close call. You know, I'd say 50-50 at best. Um, it's all about healing. It's nothing that just that bone healing. Obviously, you, know, you, lose, you lose JT, you know, and so that's the biggest thing um, uh, is making sure that we're, you know, on point mentally and physically, but also just got to keep these guys healthy. We can't lose another player. You know, it's it's amazing the different the amount of season end. You know, the Marshawn Latimer's of the world, the Evan Lyles of the world. Uh, there's just a bunch of there. I think there's 10 season ending injuries that, you know, are young players, but that's special teams that step the corner, that step in the offensive line. Those are all areas that uh, we have to keep pushing. Um, uh, they're a great team, obviously, number one team in America. Um, when you watch video, it's, it's, there's not much difference than uh, the other Alabama teams we've studied. Uh, very physical. They have the depth, they roll about uh, eight to 10 guys in the defensive line, and you, it's hard to tell one from the other. Uh, they're well coached, hand placement, and obviously they're just big guys, big uh, run stoppers up front, and obviously very, very good defense. The, the little bit of difference, but it's really not. They used to have Julio Jones when we played him before, and they have uh, number nine uh, Cooper, and he's tremendous. And when you focus on him, there's two other ones that are really good. One that's uh, got our defense really concerned. Special teams, extremely solid group, and so I think it's two. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be an uh, excellent opportunity for us. Do you feel like this is a team that can compete with that kind Absolutely. of team? Absolutely. Uh, no, after week three, probably not. You know, I thought at some point we're building one. You know, I, I made the comment I thought it was a year away. You know, and you just start watching these young players saying, "Boy, I can't wait to get a year in a weight room with them and you know get their bodies." You know, Darren Lee I thought was still a year away. Um, and uh, there's a multitude of other players. You know, our two safeties, sophomores, they'll all be back. Uh, the future's bright. Good young players in the program. I think we had seven. Six or seven freshman All-Americans, I think Jerry told me, and I'm not sure if any other team had close to that. So it's a good young team that uh, matured. Front row, Austin. You have a situation like uh, what Tom Herman is dealing with now. Uh, how, does, how will he manage this time? You, you went through this. Uh, Looks like someone hit me with a bat when he's walking around here. <laughs> uh, a good bat, though. There's, there's bad bats, and there's a lot going on in college football with bad bats. So. He's a pro. I really admire the way you know we had good conversation this morning, and he didn't initiate it. I did. I hope I said, you know, how can we help? Can how can I help you? You know, what, where are you at? And he's, you know, I got a team meeting tomorrow, and had that frazzled look that we've all seen. So he's he's really handling it well. You know, he loves Ohio State. He's very appreciative of Ohio State. It's an all good. You know, it's all good. And uh, took a chance on Tom. You know, that's what people don't realize. I got. I'm sure some of you, I can't remember, but I got the question, who, Tom Herman, you know, we're bringing Iowa State's offense to Ohio State or, you know, and um, what his recommendation and what people told me about him was correct. It started with Chip Kelly and then some other very close friends that said, you know, look at this guy. And I talked to him several times. His interview was off the charts and uh, he's been a, he's been a really instrumental member of our staff. Does it help you that you You've actually been in this situation before? Yeah, with Coach Mullen and uh, Coach Strong, uh, a bunch of them. I'm trying to think who else. I think uh, Mike Sanford. Yeah, I think there's some other ones that, you know, and, and the whole key is be a pro. Dan Mullen is a pro. And we won a national championship because of his, you know, par partially because of his efforts. And we'll be ready to go. That's I'm not concerned about Tom at all. This is a little offbeat, but um, I think you and Coach Saban have kind of shared the anecdote from you as a hungry young linebackers or a coach at Illinois State, and you called him at University of Toledo for an opening. What do you remember about talking to? I didn't get it. That's what I remember. To, what do you remember? I, His wife was tremendous, and she. Uh, I thought I had. The, I'm a recruiter, so I find out the decision maker, and uh, I do. That was a long. What am I? Fifty. That was like uh, 27, 28 years ago. And uh, he was at Toledo, and it didn't work out. Did you think you had it? Oh, I, I have a hard time remembering. I, I can't remember. I, I, you know, I'm from Ohio, so I thought I had my foot in the door, I guess. Front row, Todd. Irvin, we haven't had a whole lot of chance to ask you about Cardell and 
really our only knowledge of him because we haven't had much interaction with him is based on that you know ill-advised tweet that he sent out what's he like in terms of like his game preparation because I mean he seemed like 180 degrees opposite of you know that tweet it was it's been a process he's uh He's changed, and it's you know it's uh, from the Reed Fraggles. I can give you a list of 20 guys that have, but that's the job of Ohio State, job of our coaching staff, and job of educators is to help develop. And sometimes you miss, you know, and uh, sometimes you hit it. You know, we had a couple examples of guys didn't make it, didn't do very well. Uh, Cardell's a great story. You know, it's still in process now. You know, he's not the uh, grown man that he needs to be, but he's getting close. You know, is the thing that really struck me is when he made a mistake during the course of the game. And he come, you know, I gave him one of these and was ready to dive right in the middle of me, looked me right in the eye and said, I made a mistake, coach, it won't happen again. I said, great, go back and tell the offensive line that. And that's a good sign of maturity that where that kid would have been heard every story, every excuse possible. But I think he's in a culture in this room right here where there's absolutely no, you're not, if I hear excuse, that's, we can't have that. So he's really matured. But one of the most matured, one, one, one of the most ma difference, um, what am I trying to say? Um, what you said, the whole 180. I'm not sure I've experienced one like that. What's your message to this team? Too? You mentioned about you know, earlier in the season, maybe thinking that this group was a year away. How do you frame this whole playoff? What's your message to them? Well, we're not to that point. I think we're to the point about, uh, you know, we, we made it through finals. Uh, that ended two days ago, and that was hard here. I mean, our, once again, the, the Ohio State's not getting easier. And so our kids, you know, Taylor Decker looked like a zombie out there. He's in zoology and, you know, just so we haven't had a lot of conversation about it. I talked to the, you know, we're, we're in increments about how to, to win a game like this. You know, you have to, you know, every, every day you got to, your percentage goes up to compete and win this game if you have a good Tuesday. And they listen, I can tell we, we hit a hook when I was talking about that. Just have a really good Tuesday, have a good Wednesday. And your percentage just went up to compete in this game. And that's kind of the mythology we've been using up until we get down to New Orleans. It's just, just every day is another chance to get closer to win that game. If you don't have a good day, your chances of winning this game is probably zero. And they buy into that. Far left. Rusty? Uh, we always have to ask this question when it's been a little while. But when you have full everybody on the roster who's not injured, do you have lost anybody to academics or suspensions or anything like that? I don't believe we have. You know, Kyle Dotson is not going to be with us. I mean, uh, he's part of our program. He it was a from it was from high school actually that injury, and so um, our doctors are phenomenal here. They caught it, and so he's not going to play. Um, the suspensions, no, and what was it uh, injuries? Yeah, Armani, you know, Armani got dinged in the. Uh, so he his demeanor's great. He's he should be fine. We're hoping to get a Saturday Sunday out of him. Uh, in two days, Saturday, Sunday, and he should be ready to go. Dontre's the 50-50 guy. One more question. And academics, you said I don't. I, we don't have finals, but all I do is what they tell me, and I don't. We don't anticipate that problem. And can you get a feel for how your what your players think of Alabama? Yeah, absolutely. And what what is it? The, how do they look at? Alabama? Well, you know, I I've used Alabama. You know, I've used, you know, any time the, the top of the mountain, you, I've used them. You know, I've used, uh, uh, respectfully used them, you know, because they they play very well. You know, every year they're in a championship hunt, and I've used them. And so there's a lot of respect for uh, University of Alabama and their, and their athletes. Uh, Doug. Urban, um, this, this group of second-year guys, the 2013 recruiting class, I know we, we talked – last year maybe that as freshmen, how they might help that team. But when you look at Bosa and Zeke and Von Bell and what JT did, Darren, just, I don't know, that group that you have, sort of this core group of still pretty young guys who are playing at a pretty high level. I don't know, when you got that class in here, did you have an idea? Yeah, we felt really, really good about that class. And, and uh, now that you say, I haven't really thought about it, but you're saying those names, those are all program changer game, uh, guys. So yeah, I mean, that was, I'd have to look at the class to see it, which I'll probably do now that you got me thinking, but that's a, that's a heck of a class. And it, you're the first really number four team in really college football ever that has a chance to win a national title like this. I mean, I know in the old bowl days, maybe you can jump up, but just the idea that if this was a year ago, you guys would 
not have a chance really to win a national title has, I don't know, do you feel? There's part of me because I've been asked about that. You know, in, in 2004, we had a Utah team that finished fourth. And that Utah team on any given day, so you know, it's more inclusion. You know, I think uh, the more I think about it, you know, I would love to have this in 2004 and take that group of players and take a swing as hard as you can, and who knows what happens. So, uh, the more I think about it, I, you know, it's, it's it is ridiculously tough on our players, our players' families, which still everybody's going to get tired of saying it until someone does something about it, because that is real, is real. When you take them to a championship game, which is great for our conference and great for coaches and great for everybody, but the families still got to get in cars and hotel rooms and all that. Then we go from there to a first of a playoff, and if you're fortunate enough to win the second one, that's, a, you know, if people tell me that's an average for, on a normal-sized family, $5,000, where are they going to come up with that? And I just worry about bad things happening uh, because families can't go see it. So, um, But I, I think it's good, you know, and I just go back. Um, I was thinking about that the other day, and that we're the number four team in America. So was Utah, and they would they'd be you know imagine that at a school like that with a great school and a great team that had should have had a chance to go do it and I, Auburn that year didn't have a chance, and that was a great football team, so I I think it's all good. And, and we've heard the stories over the years. You've talked about them when you were at Florida and played Ohio State in that championship game that you worked that underdog angle. You're number four Big. playing number one. <laughs> We're not there yet. I don't know. We'll see what kind of team we got. Yeah, that was that was over the top. Big, big. Is there anything unique about playing in the college football playoff that differs from a bowl game? And have you oh, it's completely different. You know, it's it's not. You don't even. That's one of the negatives of it. You just worry about. You don't even think about the bowl. You know, it's a Sugar Bowl. Sugar Bowl is one of the great bowls in college football history, and it's all college football playoffs. So it's going to be interesting how that evolves over the years here. But it is, and, you know, it's, it's real. I, I, I love bowl games. I mean, it's a playoff game. Have you consulted with anyone with playoff experience, either at the no. FCS or NFL? No. Just trying to get the guys ready to go. In terms of finding a replacement for Tom Herman, um, You'll hear, you'll hear our athletic directors say they have a short list of candidates if they're looking for a head coach or if they need to look for a head coach. Do you keep a short list of candidates yeah. for offensive coordinator? And I'm sure that's a, probably a bridge you're going to cross after the playoffs. But well, I'm crossing it now, okay. you know, because what you, you don't want to lose someone because there's a lot of activity right now, and that's the unfortunate thing. But uh, this is a big hire. This is huge. Uh, the good thing I've had, uh, Coach Warner, that's uh, – uh, I have – you know, I'm not going to release anything, but I, I got plans. I just want to keep evaluating – the next couple of weeks, and uh, but no, I have short lists all over the place. Yeah, that for each position and strength coaches and everybody. Back row middle, Dennis. Urban, uh, following up the playoff questions. How, there's another whole different game. How do you deal with preparing to meet that? Do you have GAs watching film the whole team? No, that's a good question. And I thought I would in the uh, in the summer when I started, just kind of because I was asked the question. I said, How are you going to do this? Every available hand in this facility is working for this one and we'll worry about the next one. And I talked to our coordinators a little bit about it. And, and you know, I've done it before where during the course of the season, you, you know, you maybe send a GA to get start getting ready for a Michigan State coming down the road or something like that. Uh, but this one, you know, that it would be a tactical error on my part to have anybody in this facility working on something other than Alabama. How do you explain stockpiling? That's the word. All these quarterbacks who can produce right away well, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know. You know, I think um, I think we're a quarterback friendly offense. I don't want to take anything away from there. Uh, I think you know we we have a very systematic approach to football here. And uh, a guy, you know, if you sit in those meetings, you you should know where to where and what to do. Uh, and then we've recruited really well at some skill spots. And I still go back to the development. Of, you know what? You want to see a bad quarterback? Put a bad offensive line in front of him. And we saw, you know. I'm not taking a shot at anybody, but we didn't look very good against uh, Virginia Tech and Navy because we had a bad offensive line. Go look at the film against Wisconsin. That was a really good offensive line. So there's a lot of common denominators. And uh, if you had told me that Cardell would be able to manage that uh, two years or three, I said, there's no chance. You even said last year in spring practice, I remember Tom and I walking off the field, you think Cardell will ever be a college, you know, Ohio State quarterback? He said, absolutely. And I saw it too. So it's player development and surrounding them with good players and making sure that you're not – because sometimes you get caught in these offenses, changing coordinators, changing this, changing this. Change, we don't, we're not changing anything. 
You know, I've had five coordinators going to be head football coaches. Next year, there's not going to be new terminology. Those kids are going to continue to learn a system. So when you hear system, I get a little upset. I hear, well, he's a system quarterback. You're damn right he is. He's, he's not a grab bag quarterback, I can promise you that. And that's, that's what I like about the way we do our business. Back row middle, Nicole. Uh, it's actually basically the same question about, um, you know, every coach would love to say, you know, next guy up. But the success that you've had with the quarterbacks filling in for each other. So can you, a little bit more specifically about the quarterback development here that you've seen in, in all three guys? Well, you got four. You got Kenny Guyton. You know, you got Braxton Miller, Kenny Guyton. You got JT Barrett. You got uh, Cardell Jones. And I'm not sure, you know, that's, that's kind of uncharted waters. We had Brett Elliott go down at Utah, and a skinny kid named Alex Smith jogged on the field and did pretty good. You had Chris Leak followed up by Tim Tebow. So uh, there's been a nice pattern. And, I, you know, I don't want to take away from the quarterback coach because that's where it all starts. But like I said, there's no, there's no variance as far as, you know, the kid's not going to come in here on, you know, or change in, in spring ball, by the way, we're, we're scratching everything we're doing. That's where I think you see really a slow development of a quarterback when you start seeing, you know, offense of the day or offense of the, the season. You know, in spring, we're going to change our offense. And that's when you, I think that's, a, you know, that's when you see quarterbacks really go backwards. Front row, Tim. Yeah, Urban, uh, you've known Nick Saban for a while. You've watched him for a while. He's, what, 13 years older than you or whatever. What is it about him that you admire the way he goes about his business? I mean, what are some of the things that you've, maybe even emulated a little bit as you've watched him? He's tough. He's a, a guy that's really not a whole lot of nonsense. You know, we, we have a lot of conversations, and people probably say that about me. There's not a whole lot of, you know, we're not talking about the 1992 Chicago Bulls or something like that. We're talking about, you know, he's a very player-oriented coach, which I'd like to think we are, and a very fundamental guy. You know, it's been that way for years. We have mutual friends like Bill Belichick. And... Uh, I just, I just admire guys like that, and he, and he wins. And, and the other thing, you know, you guys both seem to approach recruiting the same way, it's sort of like a bulldog. <laughs> did, did, did you take that from him too? I mean, I mean, you're as involved in recruiting as any head coach out there. I, mean. I think that came from a long time ago. Yeah. I, just, I love recruiting. I love recruiting good players, good guys. Uh, I love it. I can't get enough of it when you're good guys, and and so it's and you're and, you, and you're selling something you love. So it's. No, that's been that way, and I, that's, I had chances or had conversations going to pros back years ago and all that, and, you know, it's to take that, where some guys, I can't wait to get away from recruiting. I never looked at it that way. All right, Clay. Let me get your uh, Tim Tebow, if you're not uh, your next uh, quarterback coach. What did you want your team to get out of his? He came here for ESPN, and uh, I love Tim. Tim's a champion. Tim's a two-time national champion. He's a uh, uh, you know, I, I have coached two players that have that same bizarre work ethic that, and toughness, and it's John Simon and Tim. And that's not being demeaning to Zach Boren or some of these other great players. It's just it's different. And, and the players know that. It's different. And I have this, you know, very few jerseys hanging in my office, and this is one of them just because of his relentless pursuit of excellence and the way he treats people. And, and so it was great, great conversation with our players. And... Uh, Kind of on the spot, you know, ESPN brought him in just for a conversation, and, and I said, do you mind? And he was great. Do you think he'll continue to stay in TV? Does he want to get – He wants another shot at playing. He does. Yeah. Um, I hope he gets it. If not, I think he's going to continue what he's doing. Last couple questions. Ari, middle. Speaking of loving recruiting, um, <laughs> you obviously want to find a quarterback coach and a coordinator that can replace Tom, but – as you're well aware, he had a lot of success success in Texas. Yeah. And when you it's go, big part you, of the thought. And you look at, at, at the short list that you talked about. How important is it to get somebody who recruits that area, or are you comfortable rejiggering your recruiting territory? No, I, that's I'm playing with that a little bit. That's a great question. Texas is Texas now, and I'm trying to think of the players that I've, you know, David Nelson and the Keystone Moore or at Florida, and then I'm sure I'm going to miss someone. But Texas guys, you know, I don't want to stereotype them, but they're they're usually very well coached. They love football. They've been raised a little bit like, you know, a lot like Ohio. You know, a kid, a kid in Ohio, you're going to play football normally. A kid in Texas, you're probably going to play. So I, I've always loved to go down there, and I love the high school coaches. And so we need to, and that's that's part of the job description, is be able to uh, go get a kid out of Texas. Okay, so that's like something that. Right now it is, unless, like you said, I rejiggle and move things around. But I'd rather not. I'd rather get a guy that has some a footprint, if I can. But you know one thing about recruiting, if you're a great recruiter, I'm going to, you know, we have some great recruiters on our staff. I would stick them in Texas and they'll go get some players.
And far left, uh, Matt. Um, just wondering, what's the key to, and you deal with this every year, there's a bowl game, but you got three more practices here, then the guys go home, and then it's go time. What What's the key when you're preparing a team for a game like this that they're ready 8.30 on New Year's night? What, what do you have? Great to question. Do? And I asked that question to Coach Holtz in 2006. You know, it was the first, that was my first time as a head football coach, the extended time for a bowl. It was like 40 days. And he kept saying to me, he says, you don't have to play that game. So for us to, there's not a lot of rah-rah going on right now. It's all about uh, taking care of business. And, and we break it into three phases. Phase one are fundamentals and conditioning. Phase two is game plan, installation. And phase three is game week. So the way, and, and the way a young mind, even an old mind works, if I said, hey, by the way, we've got 18 or whatever practices are, I don't even know how many practices we are. All I know is we're in phase two. We have two left because I'm going to give them tomorrow off. It's mentally not off. We're going to meet, but I'm not going to run them or we're not going to practice. So I'm, I want to make sure that the nine coaches, our strength coach, and most important, our players into that mentality because you can't handle that, you know, because there, there's too much going on. So it's very compartmentalized. and. And I, that came from Lou Holtz back in 2006. Do not play the game. They don't have to play the game today. I don't want to think about the game yet. They'll be the right time, and that's going to be uh, once we hit New Orleans. What's your uh, message to them when they get those five days at home? Just well, it's four and a half days that we're going to give them because we're going to come in here and practice. They go home. It'll be a hard practice, and uh, be a pro. You're playing for you're you're playing for the championship of college football. I would answer, if I'm worried about curfew, you know, I write, well, how many, what's a curfew? If I have to worry about that, you're not, we're not going to win. And uh, there's too much investment around here. So the message would be hit your body weights, be in good shape. I don't expect you to run and all that, but be uh, mentally and physically in, in uh, the right frame of mind when you get back and uh, be ready to go. And I anticipate they will.